Okay. Three, two, one, go. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 106 on the Security Network. On, on the Security Network. Uh, let's start over. Stop. Start over. All right. Start over. Hey, right, you ready? Tell me when you're ready. You're good? All right. Three, two, one, go. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 106 of Security on the In30 Network. We're going back old school, not really old school, to maybe one of our first episodes, so 100 episodes ago, two years ago. And we want to discuss backing up. And I know we've talked about this, and we and I think we've gotten out of our mission of being really, really simple. I mean, we're trying to tell you the news, and we're only trying to pick stories that are really – that are meant for you and not – and not for security professionals. But my sister the other day got her wedding photos back and she asked the question, "What? how do I back these up? And I said, well, just buy a hard drive. And she goes, buy something? Like spend money? And I go, well, yeah, w w what would you like? And it, clicked, and, it, and it occurred to me, she has no idea how to back up. And I'm not saying that she doesn't know, but she it's one of those things, and we talk about this all the time, where is the first step? Guide someone to the first step before they type how to back up on the computer. And let's talk about what exactly that is. So Tom's here to also help us. So hey, Tom. Howdy. So how many backups do you have? Oh, um, well, okay. How many Let me can explain you mention? my system. <laughs> Let me, okay. The things that I can mention, I, I will lay them out here. Okay, uh, I've got a use sync thing, which replicates my data across every computer that I've got it installed on. So I've got four machines, and they each have a copy of a folder of my most important things. Some of it's encrypted, some of it's plain text. Some of it would just be annoying if I lost it, but it's not anything private. It's like, you know, configuration files for you know, my RSS reader, really secret stuff. Uh, so I've got four machines, one of them in a city far away, uh, a couple of them at the house, one of them that always travels with me. Um, and all of those have a copy of my data, but it's not really backup per se, because I can't go in time. Uh, I can't go back in time. Let's say on this computer, if something horrible happens and something decides to erase all that data and I turn on all my computers and it synchronizes the erasure, all of that data is gone. So real backup means you have to be able to go backwards in time to get it. It can't just be synchronization, right? You can't just throw things in Dropbox and hope they stay there forever because Dropbox, it's good, but it's, it's not backup. Um, so what I've got, so I've got a hard drive sitting right here on a USB three dock and every day, two of my computers back up to that drive whenever they're on, they, they turn on, they, they see the computer on the network. They go, Oh yeah, I should probably do a backup. And I've got it set for once a day and it clears out all backups as it runs out of room. Uh, but it, I, I've got probably two, three months worth of active backups right there on the drive. But for longer term, and more importantly, if something were to happen to my home, if this place were to go up in flames or there's a giant earthquake or it falls into the lake, I mean, that's that's really awful. And fishing a hard drive out of, out of a lake, you're not going to get a lot of data off of it. So I actually pay for a backup service that backs up to the cloud, which is really just another word for you know other people's computers. And I pay someone a yearly service fee to take all of my computers and shove all of their data up to this place. So right now our cloud is raining. I just want to point that out. 60% of Americans actually think that the weather affects the quote unquote, the cloud. Well, <laughs> that is not true. Anyway, uh, I am not as crazy as Tom. I do have backups. I have a time machine backup. I have, which is a little USB three hard drive on my desk, and I back up to a server. So maybe I am as crazy as you are. That that is in ZFS replication. So if one drive breaks, I have three drives in there. I can pull it. I can stick another one in there and be happy. So I am good with that. Uh, it's not, and I don't pay a service. 
what I actually do is every two years I buy a new Chromebook. And with the Chromebook, I get 100 gigs of Google Drive space, which maybe I am. But let's start with something simple. You get your wedding photos, which is actually probably around three or four gigs if you paid somebody to do it for you. And your wedding video is probably on a DVD. So let's say five gigs there if you don't have multiple copies of the actual meeting. So you're looking at 10 gigs. I mean, really like 10 or 11 gigs of stuff. Now, we're talking about wedding photos because, I mean, to my sister, this was the only thing that was important. But take all your other files. And I, I think we should stop there and talk about what files are we talking about that you have to back up? Let's start with those. She's saying her wedding photos, but I think we need to start with, we're not talking about backing up your OS. We're not talking about backing up things that you can always get again. We're talking about what's the important things. So let's start with, with your photos. Your photos are one. Your music that you can't get again. So, so if they're stored somewhere, maybe if they're on Amazon, you bought them legally, Apple's gonna let you download them again. But let's say you can't, your music files. Then your documents your term paper, your college work, your tax, your tax stuff. But again, you can redo your tax stuff, but if you want to make it easy there. Other than that, that's it. Uh, in XP, it was called your My Documents folder. I think that was the best way to describe it. So I, Tom, is that good? Is that, I think that's what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, that's a good first step. Really anything, you know, think about all the stuff on your computer. And actually I, I do this I wouldn't say terribly often, maybe maybe once a year, twice a year, uh, you know, go through your computer, look at the files you've got. You don't, you don't have to, you know, drill down to the, the C drive and Windows and go, well, do I really need calc.exe? We're not talking about that. Uh, look at the stuff you use. Look at the, the folders that you don't dive into recently and go, okay, these tax returns from, you know, 10 years ago, do I, do I really need this? Or are these... These scanned receipts from three years ago, do I really need this, this McDonald's receipt back here? Uh, and, and look at the stuff that you either could live without, and on the flip side of it, look at the things that you know you had no idea were on your computer, but wow, you can't imagine you know being without those. I actually, you know, when cleaning out one of my old tech boxes, I found uh, it, it was amazing, and I... I have them around here somewhere, uh, or I would show them on camera. I'm not sure where they are. I found two eight megabyte compact flash cards. I mean, this this was like pre SD card compact flash. This is what digital cameras way back in the day, after they got off of the you know the floppy disk. Because I love those floppy disk digital cameras; they're great. Uh, they went to compact flash. A whole eight megabytes. That's that I didn't misspeak. That's eight megs. Um, and I do have a thirty-two were, megabyte one. I do have thirty-two megabytes, but that's <laughs> about it. High roller. So uh, I, I found some some childhood photos that like someone like my my father or someone took on a trip to the zoo that you know I had seen in my grandmother's scrapbook, and that's the only place I knew that they existed. And now I have perfect digital copies right here on Compact Flash. I lost it. I was just like, this is amazing. I, I don't, how could I live without these? I didn't even know I had them. Uh, so the first thing I did is I created an album on Google photos and I took the photos and I drag, I dragged them into Chrome and now they're on Google servers forever. Right. Unless Google completely goes away or unless they have a huge misstep and erase everyone's photos, my stuff is safe there. I then took the files and I, I put them on my computer in a folder that I knew would get backed up sometime in the next 24 hours. And now, you know, it's going to take a whole lot of effort or, or sadness for me to lose those childhood photographs. Well, exactly. I mean, you found them and you first, like we said, figure out what we need to find. So you found those complex flash. I found in an old chest, my dad's uh, 35 millimeter photos that I've been scanning for him and putting them somewhere. But, I mean, we're not just talking about digital backups. We're talking about just generic stuff. I went through a few years ago and got all my baby records, and I'm trying to scan them in. But, again, let's we're, we're going too far away. You figured out what you wanted to back up or you found stuff. You got them somehow onto your computer. Now, what do you do with them? So the first thing I guess we both recommend is buy some sort of external hard drive. 
They're ninety dollars. I mean, I'm looking at this one on Amazon. I I just typed in portable hard drive. They're just something. They're a hard drive, a spinning hard drive with with some USB connection. Two terabytes is ninety dollars. It's way. It's I'm not going to say it's more than enough, but it's definitely enough. And if you it's a great in, start. Yeah, if you want to get into the partitioning to have different files and everything else, that that's one thing. But just dump everything on there. Okay. The problem is now you have the, – there's a saying that one backup is zero backups, but you have it on your computer and you have it somewhere else. So you have now one backup. Now, assuming nothing happens to the backup, you're okay for right now. You just got it off. And that's what Tom was saying with those compact flashcards. You got it off. The first thing you want to do is make sure there's a second copy somewhere while you're dealing with it. So now you put it somewhere. And the next thing I told my sister is, oh, by the way, you have one. You really do need another one. And convincing someone to spend another $90 is really tough. And that's where Tom and I were thinking about, can we figure out other services that are not necessarily cheap or not necessarily paid, like some free, some paid. But what else do we do with it? So, so like you, I have your hard drive. And we decide, you know what? Maybe we can go and we can find free services. So the first thing, if you're dealing with photos, I would say open a Google Drive, a Google Photo, Google account, and go to photos.google.com, or Amazon has their free. If you have Prime, they give you their photo store, and put it there. Tell it the folder you want to sync, and just let it go. Their photos. I mean, unless there's something you really, really don't want spreading then you would have already found the backup. Their family photos, Google's not harvesting them. They're not doing anything with them. They're private, they're there. And again, this is for the backup, just in case you lose them. So, right, Tom, am I on the right track? Google Photos, Amazon Photos, Apple Photos. Absolutely. Okay. I, I know that uh, I know that Dropbox has got a, a similar package for, you know, any any picture you take with your phone or any photo you upload. They've got, you know, a specific photos UI that even lets you view them and put them into albums and it's it's pretty slick, honestly. But you yeah. know, Google Google Photos is gonna be free and you can't store, you know, every picture known to man up there. It's not unlimited storage, but it's it's a bunch of storage, right? Only my grandmother has run out of the free limit on Google Photos. Well, I mean, I'm talking about it's free for the for the compressed. And again, if yes. this is a backup. Yes, it is. And if and the idea is I look, I take professional photos, so they don't take my raw photos. If I put two photos, remember, if you lost everything and this is your only copy, you'll be good with it. I promise you, you wouldn't necessarily be able to tell the difference. If you're a, photo a professional photographer and this stuff matters to you, you've already known how to back up. You've already had a failure. You've already discussed this. But if you're just trying to put something on there, let Google let Google store it. I mean, they haven't shown they haven't shown us any negativity against it. If you don't trust Google, uh, like I said, Amazon. Amazon, if you have, if you're a Prime member, they will store unlimited photos. Apple Photos probably has something through your Apple Drive account. Uh, Sync has it. If if you don't mind photos being public, and you know, depending on the photos, if if you're taking you know, just landscape photos, and you're not a professional photographer, you're not trying to sell these. Uh, you know, Flickr, Flickr is still around now. Don't count on Flickr as your only backup. We're not sure how long it's going to be around because Yahoo's kind of in the tank right now but you know Flickr exists you can open up a photo bucket account there's a lot of photo sharing sites so if you don't mind it being public if you don't need security around it uh, if you don't mind other people even looking or even using your photos sometimes because that does happen on Flickr um, you know you you can upload them there to a photo sharing site and let them live now I'm I really I, I'll say it but I don't recommend it Look, probably even Facebook, you can upload all your photos. They do have a right. download thing. Look, we're, we're not big on Facebook, but again, if the goal is to get these photos somewhere else, off your property, off your site, so if you have a catastrophe, you get them back, we're, I'm just offering up another service. Now, you've mentioned Dropbox or Google Drive or Spider Oak or OneDrive. Now we're getting into like the paid services. And to be honest, paying... And I want to go with the syncing services first. Uh, Dropbox, I think a terabyte now is $100 a year. 
Uh, Google Drive is 100 gigs is like 20, is 25 is 250 a month, 25 dollars a year. Uh, Apple's a little more, but now you have these. Now you can, if this is the way you want to go, and you want to have a paid service for it, you can do download Dropbox, pay for it, and put your photos there, put your what, put your files there, and everything else. It costs some money. But you know what? It's that third part. It's that offline backup. So if you have some sort of fire in your neighborhood or a massive power failure or flood, you're not losing it and it's not nearby. It's not like at your neighbor's house. So now you both lose all your backups. Right. And, and you know, with – I should mention with, you know, your external hard drive, dragging over a folder – is not a really robust backup strategy. Sure, it works. Sure, it's it's going to get the data from your computer onto something else that's not your direct computer, but it, it's still it's still manual, right? You still got to drag over the folder. Maybe maybe you're going to name them by date or put you know dash and then the day today, and it's it's okay. But you have to remember to do it. And most people, uh, you know, especially people that aren't really particular about this thing. The, the people that don't care about the tech, they, they just want to do their work, get on with their lives, and hopefully the backups are just there. You know, that's that's when they call a tech like me to come in and they say, hey, our computer crashed, but it's okay. We have a backup. Can you reload it? And you look and the backup's like, you know, eight years old. And you go, uh, this thing hasn't been running. Uh, do, how how are you backing up? It's like, oh, Joe's supposed to drag over the folder every Sunday. Yeah, no, that that doesn't work. All operating systems have got great backup utilities built right into them. Yeah, you know, Windows has got their their Windows backup right there. It's super easy to set up. Just type in backup into the start menu; it'll pop right up. Um, uh, Apple famously has Time Machine, which is uh, frankly one of the best backup programs that I've seen in probably a decade or two. It's it's easy to set up. It's easy to use. It looks beautiful and it works. Uh, you, you really Sometimes. don't have to fuss around Sometimes. with a time machine. But okay. A time machine does work. There are lots of people who are very much down on time machine. I'm actually having a problem as we speak that time machine is not picking up the hard drive and this and that. But for most people, you get a new Mac, you plug in, you plug, you plug your hard drive in, you hit, hit reload from time machine. And it does an awesome job. So I give a big thumbs up to Time Machine. But again, it's one of those every once in a while there's an issue. But with all of them, they have a major issue. So then you got to check your backups. Right. So yeah, you, you've got to make sure they. Well, <laughs> Linux has got a lot of things. If if you wanted to do you know rsync over to a remote SSH server that's piping it to Amazon S3. You could totally do that. If you wanted to write a bash script that dumps encrypted GPG archives onto your external hard drive, you know, in a ZFS cluster, you could do that too. Um, I recommend the really trivial and really easy Deja Dupe, D-E-J-A dash D-U-P. And it's the stupidest thing ever. You say, hey, my hard drive is over here. And it says, okay, you should probably have a a password on this so it's secure. And then it encrypts all your backup files and shoves it on the drive. And it doesn't automatically. If it bugs out, if if it says, hey, I couldn't complete something or I couldn't get this file over here, um, it, it pops up a window and it tells you that. It pops up a window and says, you're running out of backup space. Should I delete some old stuff? Or you can set it to be automatic and it just doesn't bug you about it. It's it's great. I love this utility. So, I mean, there you go. All the operating systems have something that does it for you. And now we're talking, again, we're going back to external hard drive into your computer. You tell it what folders to sync. It does it. You let it go. And the key there is you let it go. You don't have to worry about it. Now you need a second backup because we're going to talk about three backups. And like you said, uh, Dropbox, Google Drive. Google famously will give you a terabyte of space when you buy a Chromebook. So just look for Chromebook deals. $150 will get you two years of a terabyte, plus a really awesome little computer that you can give to your kids or you could leave in the car or you can take places and and you'll be safe and secure for the most part on, on, on the Google servers. Next, so you got that. Now, music's another big thing. Where do you put your music? Okay, so so I only download. But now, if you're if you're renting your music, that's fine. That's great and all. Continue doing that. You don't have to worry about anything. Uh, 
I like to buy my music. I like to buy my music specific. I picked one site, which was Amazon, and I left it. But all that music from the old days of the CDs that I ripped. Again, Google uh, Google Music will allow you to upload 50,000 tracks for free. Apple Music will allow you to upload. Amazon has some weird limitations. But Google Play, Google Music, 50,000 tracks you can upload. It's there. It's saved. And if there's a problem, I think you can download it back. There's another free way to get a backup. of your, It's one data type, but just your music. It's there. And if there's a problem, you're, again, you're going to get more compression, but at least you have something. Yeah, and, and for, for my music, because I'm, I'm not an audiophile, I don't really care that much. There's there's some you know weird indie stuff that I ripped like 15 years ago that I like to keep just purely for nostalgia. Uh, and I, I shoved it up to Google Music when Google Music launched, and it's still there. I actually I don't have it physically on any hard drive that I own anymore. It's just all there in Google's universe. And with a click, I can go ahead and pull my entire library down if I really wanted to. If I wanted to pull, you know, the the couple hundred gigs of stuff I've got up there now, I could pull it down. Uh, but I don't have to. And, you know, in the Google Music app, if you're a Google Music person, uh, you can play it all right there. So it's it's easy. And it's another great backup that's free totally free now again if if you just use spotify and pandora you don't really have to worry about this unless you've got music files but that seems to be a really antiquated way to listen nowadays i mean look my wife and i i i i use all my google rewards money to pay for google all access and i'm happy that i do and i like that functionality but I don't know. I always end up going back to listening to a CD or to an artist on music that I already have. So, call. I guess I'm oh, old yeah. fashioned. I guess I'm just old fashioned. But there you go. I, so, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I pay you know Google eight bucks a month to listen to Journey's greatest hits. And really, if I were if I were just to buy like a, the Journey discography, I could have ended my Google Music subscription like two months after I got it and saved all the money. <laughs> I mean, there you go. But then, then the last thing is our documents, your term papers, your things from college. I mean, those are not big. Those you can put on a second USB thumb drive. You can, again, Google, Google Drive will do it. Dropbox will do it. All those are really small. So your thumb drive, you're good. You put it there. But then again, again, you're, if you're trying to save money, we're giving you these options. But really what you want is... The, the hard drive we told you to buy, and Tom's going to finish it off with the three different like backup company services that you can pay for. Yes. So uh, uh, this backup service that I personally use and I can vouch for, um, I do have to say it's it's not a Java applet, so it's not you know super unsafe. Uh, but it is a Java, an embedded Java Java application that runs, and that's how they get it to run on Windows and iOS 10 and all the Linuxes, uh, is CrashPlan. Uh, and what's great about CrashPlan is you don't have to mess with, if you don't want to use the Windows backup utility, you install CrashPlan, uh, you pay them for the cloud backup, and you say, hey, I'm going to back up to your server's CrashPlan, uh, but also... I'd like you to back up to this external hard drive I've got over here specifically for my backups, and they'll do it. Uh, it's really, really easy. If you have multiple computers, you can actually back up your stuff to a different computer. And they've got a really nice uh, encryption system. So if you wanted to say, you know, hey, here's this secret password, encrypt it before I hand you the data. You can do that. So my backups are encrypted before they even touch the wire, before they hit the net in any way. Uh, and they go to Carbonite and uh, the car, or I'm sorry, they go to Crash Plan, and uh, the Crash Plan people can't open up these backups without that key. And it's it's a pretty serious key. Uh, so I, I pay for a family plan, which is uh, ten computers, and I'm paying twelve fifty a month. Uh, to back up 10 computers, unlimited storage. You don't have to worry about the storage space. It's just easy. You set it up and you leave it alone and it, it figures it out. They email me, you know, once a week saying, hey, these computers have backed up. This computer that's highlighted in red, we haven't been able to talk to for a little while. 
So make sure that backup is running or it can get online, uh, which is really helpful because there was one computer that lost its internet connection because I don't regularly use it, but I wanted it backed up. Um, the other one uh, that's really, really popular is Carbonite. And I've actually, I've used Carbonite before. I would say I like Crash Plan better. Uh, I think the interface is a little tighter. It's a little easier to use. Uh, but Carbonite was great. It was fast. It was easy. It kept things backed up. Uh, a personal uh, basic plan for a single computer uh, is going to be 60 bucks a year. Uh, unlimited storage, you don't have to worry about it. Uh, I should say a uh, crash plan for an individual computer unlimited storage is five bucks a month. Um, so, you know, roughly same price. It's, uh, it, both of these are really good options. Uh, you fire and forget, you set them once, you walk away, it's all done, it's backed up, you don't have to worry about it. And I have recovered data from this. It's not the fastest process in the world because you do have to download stuff. Uh, but, you know, if you wanted to get one or two files, it's relatively quick to do that. Um, another one that I have not personally used uh, is Backblaze. Uh, now, I've heard good things about it. Uh, unlimited data uh, per computer, five bucks a month, same price. Uh, and I, I've heard great things. Uh, I will say, you know, Crash Plan definitely gets my vote because it does have the Linux compatibility. Uh, and it's way easier to use. Other ones, uh, I know Mosey is is fairly popular, uh, but they've got you know a, a data pricing plan, so you have to manage how much data you're backing up to them uh, every month. But you know, try it out, see what works for you. Uh, if if you would like more details on uh, crash plan specifically, go ahead and send an email to the show. I'll be happy to answer it. I've been using them for years and I am a happy, happy paying customer. The, what I'm looking at all three is that there's a limitation to one user, the family plan type thing. I think you said crash plan has it. The problem, the family plan is what you really want. I mean, otherwise you're paying $50 a year per, per person in your household. So right. for my wife and I, it's a hundred dollars. Or what we can right. do. If, if you've got two or more computers, uh, if you've got more than two computers, the family plan on Crash Plan is definitely the best way to go. Okay, and then the other, and again, these are the set it and forget it. You have your OS, your operating system, taking care of the hard drive, and then you have this online, this online service taking care of the online for you. So it's set it and forget it. The other, the other thing you can do is if you want to do a little more work. Like I said, you can find these free solutions. You can get a terabyte of Dropbox space for a th for for a hundred bucks a year, and then you just make shared folders for all the different people in your family. And and again, it involves some trust and unencryption, or you have to do the encryption there. But it's done, and then you can then use Dropbox and everything, or Google Drive or anything else. But there's all look, there's all these different things. But the unfortunate part is you do have to spend some money. There has to be some money laid out just to protect these files, and and you can go you can go far with a few dollars, but doing it all for free ends up being really really difficult. Yeah, and there's there's a, a moment where you know you're trying to run all these backups and protect all your files for free. You're trying to avoid spending money in any way that you can. But how much time are you spending with this? Every time you drag something over to, you know, the Google Drive free plan uh, and after you've packaged it all up in a nice folder and you've named the dates and you're, you're dragging it up there and then you're manually deleting stuff that should be cleaned out. How much time have you spent, you know, every every month? And if, if you know, your computer dies at the end of the month right before you make your backup, can you really afford to miss all that? Uh, I should mention with these online services – they run constantly. I, I crash plan by default has got a 15 minute interval. If my computer dies right now, I lose 15 minutes of work. And that's something I can live with. That's a backup system that I like. If, if you're backing up once a month on the free stuff, can you lose a month of your data? How important is it to you? But again, we're all talking about if you have a lot of things. I mean, if you're talking about you have your wedding photos, you know what? Buy a couple SD cards. Give them to your friends, and you're done with it. Like I said, it's 10 gigs. You can buy a 16 gig SD card for 10 bucks, and you put it on, and you send it to five, buy five of them, send them to your friends, and you're done. If you're going a little more than that, then you have to listen to what we were saying, 
And and if you're going crazy, where this is not the show for you, where you want to back up, like you said, to your server, set R sync to go to Jungle Disk and then to S3 and everything else. So, <laughs> or if you're in a business where no, you have to comply, where you have compliance issues, yeah, you, you got to worry about that. Yeah. But again, if you haven't started backing up, that should be your first project. Figure out how to get your data or just start analyzing what your data is and figure out how to get it. If that's throw it right now on a few USB drives and keep them in a the drawer labeled backup, start with that. If you want to go buy, go out now, go out this weekend, buy a $100 uh, portable hard drive, have it shipped to you from Amazon, and just, then just set up your computer to back up to it. You're already ahead of the game. Yeah, well, one of the, the main tenets of security is data availability. Uh, it's not just, you know, authenticating or protecting that data. It's, it's making sure you can get to it. You know, that's why uh, DDoS attacks are security issues. It's because it, it hurts one of the three main tenets, which is data availability. Uh, so backups, definitely security, definitely important. So with that, we're set. Again, this was supposed to be really simple, just a couple ideas. And if you have more questions, email us. We'll be more than happy to answer it. Maybe next week we go into something a little more crazy. But for right now, the wedding photos, your baby photos, your everything, just find a way to get them on a second, uh, even better a third, and make sure one of those are not are outside of 50 miles of your house, preferably in the cloud somewhere, whether it be free or whether it be paid. So everyone let's let's call it a night have a good night see everyone okay bye